So that, that's an interesting distinction to draw. So if you look at the way Tesla is approaching the problem and the way you're approaching the problem, which is very different than the rest of the uh, self-driving car world, so let's put them aside, is you're treating most of the driving task as a machine learning problem. And the way Tesla is approaching it is with the multitask learning, where you break it, the task of driving into hundreds of different tasks, and you have this multi-headed neural network mm -hmm. that's very good at performing each task. And there, there's presumably something on top that's stitching stuff together in order to uh, make control decisions, policy decisions about how you move the car. But what that allows you, there's a brilliance to this because it allows you to um, master each task, like lane detection, uh, stop sign detection, uh, traffic light detection, uh, drivable area segmentation, uh, you know, vehicle, bicycle, pedestrian detection. Uh, there's some localization tasks in there. Also predicting, uh, like, yeah, predicting how the, the entities in the scene are gonna move. Like everything is basically a machine learning task, whether it's a classification, segmentation, prediction, and, it's nice because you can have this entire engine, data engine that's mining for edge cases for each one of these tasks. And you can have people like engineers that are basically masters of that task. They like become the best person in the world at, uh, as you talk about the cone guy for uh, for, yeah, for Waymo. Yeah, the good old cone guy. The, the become the best person in the world at, uh, at, uh, at cone detection. I, I, so there's, that's a compelling notion from a supervised learning perspective. Aut automating much of the process of edge case discovery and retraining neural network for each of the individual perception tasks. And then you're looking at the machine learning in a more holistic way, uh, basically doing end-to-end -end learning on the driving task, su supervised, trained on the data of the actual driving of people that use comma AI, like actual human drivers doing manual control, plus the moments of disengagement that uh, maybe with some labeling could indicate the failure of the system. So you have the, you have a huge amount of data for positive control of the vehicle, like successful control of the vehicle, both maintaining the lane as, as I think you're also working on longitudinal control of the vehicle, and then failure cases where the vehicle does something wrong that it needs disengagement. So like what, why do you think you're right and Tesla is wrong on this? And do you think do you think you'll come around the Tesla way? Do you think Tesla will come around to, to your way? If you were to start a chess engine company, would you hire a bishop guy? See, we have uh, this is Monday morning quarterbacking. Is uh, yes, probably. <laughs> So, oh, oh, our rook guy. Oh, we stole the rook guy from that company. Oh, we're going to have real good rooks. Well, there's not many pieces, right? You can, uh, there's not many guys and gals to hire. You just have a few that work on the bishop, a few that work on the rook. But is that not ludicrous today to think about in, in a world of alpha zero? But alpha zero is a chess game. So the, the, the fundamental question is how hard is driving compared to chess? Because- Water. So long-term, end-to-end will be the right solution. The question is, how many years away is that? End-to-end is going to be the only solution for level five. For the only way we of get course. there. Of course. And of course, Tesla's going to come around to my way. And if you're a rook guy out there, I'm sorry. The cone guy. Oh. I don't know. We're going to specialize each task. We're going to really understand rook placement. Yeah. I understand the intuition you have. I mean, that... That uh, is a very compelling notion that we can learn the task end to end, like the same compelling notion you might have for natural language conversation. But I'm not sure, because one thing you sneaked in there is the assertion that it's impossible to get to level five without this kind of approach. I don't know if that's obvious. I don't that's know if that's obvious either. I, I don't actually uh, mean that. I think that it is much easier, much easier to get to level five with an end-to-end -end approach. I think that the other approach is doable, but the magnitude of the engineering challenge may exceed what humanity is capable of. So, but what do you think of the Tesla data engine approach? 
which to me is an active learning task is, is kind of fascinating, is, so is breaking it down into these multiple tasks and mining their data constantly for like edge cases for these different tasks. Yeah, but the tasks themselves are not being learned. This is feature engineering. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's a higher abstraction level of feature engineering for the different tasks. It's task engineering in a sense. It's slightly better feature engineering, but it still fundamentally is feature engineering. And if anything about the history of AI has taught us anything, it's that feature engineering approaches will always be replaced and lose to end to end. Now, to be fair, I cannot really make promises on timelines, but I can say that when you look at the code for Stockfish and the code for AlphaZero, one is a lot shorter than the other. <laughs> a lot more elegant, required a lot less programmer hours to write. Yeah, but there was a lot more murder of bad uh, agents on the uh, Alpha Zero side. By murder, I mean uh, agents that played a game and mm -hmm. failed miserably. Yeah. Oh, and, oh. And in simulation, that failure is less costly. Yeah. In in real world, it's. Wait, it's do you mean in practice? Like Alpha Zero has lost games miserably? No. I, oh. Well, I haven't seen that. <laughs> no, but I know. But the the the, the, the requirement for Alpha Zero is a simulator to be, to be able to like evolution, human evolution, uh, not human evolution, biological evolution of life on Earth from the origin of life has murdered trillions upon trillions of organisms on the path to us humans. Yeah. So the question is, can can we uh, stitch together a human-like object without having to go through the entirety process of evolution? Well, no, but do the evolution and simulation. Yeah, that's the question, can we simulate? So do you have a sense that it's possible to simulate some aspect Mu zero of is exactly this. Mm -hmm. Mu zero is, is the solution to this. Mu zero, I think, is going to look be looked back as the canonical paper. And I don't think deep learning is everything. I think that there's still a bunch of things missing to get there. But Mu zero, I think, is going to be looked back as the kind of cornerstone paper paper um, of this whole deep learning era. And mu zero is the solution to self-driving cars. You have to make a few tweaks to it, but mu zero does effectively that. It does those rollouts and those murdering in, in a learned simulator and a learned dynamics model. I was, it's interesting. It doesn't get enough love. That I was paper. blown away when I, I was blown away when I read that paper. I'm like, you know, okay. I've always said a comma. I'm going to sit and I'm going to wait for the solution to self-driving cars to come along. This year I saw it. It's mu zero. Yeah. <laughs> so uh <laughs> sit back and let the winning roll in <laughs> so your sense just to elaborate a little bit to linger on the topic your sense is neural networks will solve driving yes like we don't need anything else i think the same way chess was maybe the chess and maybe google are the pinnacle of like search algorithms and things that look kind of like a star um the pinnacle of this era is going to be self-driving cars and but on the on the path of that, you have to deliver products, and it's possible that the path to full self driving cars will take decades. I doubt it. So how long would you put on it? Like what? What are we? You're chasing it. Tesla's chasing it. What are we talking about? Five years, ten years, fifty Let's say years? In the twenty twenties. In the twenty twenties. Yeah. The later part of the twenty twenties. With the neural network, well, that would be nice to see. And on the path to that, you're delivering products, which is a nice L2 system. That's what Tesla is doing. A nice L2 system. Well, it just gets better every time. L2. The only difference between L2 and the other levels is who takes liability. And I'm not a liability guy. I don't want to take liability. I'm level two forever. <laughs>